Welcome to Brit Nerds, now with 50% more British Nerd. This week in Brit Nerds, Thor the movie gets a review, a new Brit Nerd joins the team, Ryan takes gaming news to a place of magic and goblins, and China outlaws Doctor Who. But first, uh, we're going to have some shout outs. This is the time in the show, right at the start, before everything else, that we take time to thank you for watching by reading out some of the comments and messages that we've received. So, the first one, first ever shout out, is from MST3K Tom, who writes I've just seen the new Green Lantern footage that's been released. I keep trying to think of this movie as just another part of the DC multiverse, but the Green Lantern fan of me keeps getting disappointed. From the WonderCon footage I saw, it looks like they're just making Parallax the big villain of this movie. It's too soon to put Parallax in the Green Lantern movie. It feels like they're dumbing him down just so they can overload this movie with CGI. Well, MST3K Tom. Links are his YouTube channel in the comment box below. I don't believe they are dumbing it down by having Parallax as the villain, and I don't think they're overloading this film with CG. The CG in this film is massive. That's why we didn't get a decent trailer way back when, uh, I can't remember when the first trailer was released, but that's why that trailer flopped. It didn't have, they didn't have all the CG done. They didn't have enough CG done at all to have a decent trailer. The WonderCon footage has, re has caused me to regain my faith in this movie. And the huge amount of CG is important. They were never going to do this with props alone. The Green Lantern powers would just make that impossible. Also, the fact that they're making the aliens all with CG means that you're not going to just have a clumpy person in a suit. So, I am liking the fact that they've got all this CG. Parallax seeming to be how he is in the trailer. Um, looks like he's physically uh, embodied by the souls that he's absorbed or something. I think I read that in a quote somewhere. I'll include that on the Brit Nerds Facebook page as soon as I can find it um, after this video has been uploaded. Parallax being the main villain of this movie made sense, I think, for a very important reason. The Yellow Impurity, for anyone who doesn't know, um, this was before Parallax. Okay, it's quite involved. Um, effectively, before Parallax was a villain, even known about, in the comic books, there was what was called the Yellow Impurity. This meant that the Green Lantern Ring couldn't interact with anything that was yellow. Now this wasn't particularly given a reason way back in the past, because effectively without this, the Green Lantern Ring would have been too powerful, because they didn't have powerful enough enemies for the stories. Obviously these days now you've got all the different colour um, rings, there are a lot of really powerful enemies that the Green Lantern has to contend with, the yellow impurity isn't necessary anymore, especially since it was caused by Parallax. Obviously, removing the yellow impurity, they couldn't have the yellow impurity out and have a Hal Jordan origin without it involving Parallax at some point. Anyone who knows the series will know what I'm talking about. Anyone who doesn't know the series, this is a response to our viewer. If there's no yellow impurity, Parallax has to be um, alive in the world. If Parallax is alive in the world, he is a villain. This is fact. I'm a massive Green Lantern nerd. I have the tattoo to prove at least some level of dedication. You'll have to take my word for it. So that is why he's going to be the villain in this movie. Ryan Reynolds has been quoted as saying, Hector Hammond and Parallax will not be the only people the Green Lantern gets to beat up in this movie. So, trust that they know what they're doing, trust that this film will be good, and hopefully that trust will be rewarded. Hopefully that's a good enough response to your question. Now that was the only message we received uh, since our last episode. We've been lax in the uploading, uh, this will be remedied in the future. Feel free to message us on any issue, we will respond. Um, at the moment, this is me responding, if it's a gaming issue, or a tech issue, and I don't know the answer, one of the other Brit nerds will film the answer for you. Okay, movie news. Um, I saw Thor, uh, the movie, on Monday this week. First day I could see it, because I was excited for it. All the footage I'd seen, all of the 
talk from people who'd seen um, advanced previews and all this sort of thing, I had to see it. Now I saw it in 3D first because it was only available in 3D on the first day. I'm glad I did, it was fantastic. I filmed a review on Wednesday. It took me a while to uh, get it written. I've not written a, re a movie review in the past um, at all before. Um, but here it is. Now after waiting a very, very long time for this movie to come out, I can finally give you my thoughts on the final product rather than just speculation based on information I've pinched from other news sites. I'll start off by saying that although I have read Thor uh, comics in the past, I'm not a massive fanboy of this series. There isn't going to be any of the hang-ups on minor details like I did with uh, information I was getting about the Green Lantern movie. So this review isn't going to be as thorough as maybe a hardcore Thor fan might require. However, this is going to be a fairly full review for anyone else, effectively, other than just the hardcore fanboys. Hopefully this will give you all the information you need to know whether or not you want to see this movie. Of course the answer should be yes, but who am I to tell you what to do? Now, all that said, I am a massive fan of comic books, and what are comic books? Well, they're stories told with the help of images. So, two things that this movie needs to have. One, spectacular graphics. These days, there's no reason for it not to look amazing. The second, it needs to have a story that works, because it's all about stories. Now, as far as special effects went with this film, they were subtle. Just like with the Iron Man movies before them, you didn't notice them as much. Now, obviously, when they're in Asgard, or Thor is flying, or they're fighting the Ice Giants, you know, special effects of some sort have been used, be it um, a set uh, created and CG backgrounds put in, or a person being completely CG, or whirlwinds or lightning effects. You could tell where the CG had been used for the most part, but it didn't jump out at you. Whereas with films like Avatar, where there was the spectacle of the 3D, with this film there wasn't so much of that. All of the effects felt believable. Just like with Iron Man, you really did believe that suit could fly. With this film, you didn't think, oh they're on a green screen as soon as it popped up. Asgard felt real. The quality of the CG, I felt, far outweighed the quantity that was used, um, if that makes sense. Uh, effectively, they could have made do with this sort of amount of CG on a much smaller production, but the quality was so outstanding, you, it was seamless. Now, it's worth mentioning at this point that I saw the 3D version of this movie, so things coming closer and going away, you could tell all that sort of thing. My previous experiences with 3D were Avatar and How to Train Your Pet Dragon. In those films there was a lot of forced depth of field. I didn't want to always look in the same places as the director was telling the audience to look. Just say there was something interesting happening in the background in Avatar. The camera would be brought forwards, the background would blur, it was very jarring. This film it used the 3D in a much more subtle way. Yes, you could tell where the 3D was, but it was more to add to what was already there. It was to enhance the images that already put in front of you, rather than, look at me, I'm 3D, like there were with films years and years ago. Um, the Pirates 4D ride at Disneyland, for example, had um, swords coming out of the screen at your face, sort of thing. There was none of that sort of rubbish in this movie. It was very, very well done. It didn't detract from the experience at all, and I will update when I see the 2D version, which should be this weekend, to tell you whether or not I thought the 3D was definitely worth going to more than the 2D. Now, the movie looked fantastic. I've explained this pretty fully. However, it's no use looking amazing if the story falls flat, and it didn't. It did hold its own. It was like an action movie. Commando, Demolition Man come to mind, where you pretty much knew where the story was going to go. There were a few twists and they were really well done. You probably know which character those twists are coming from. However, it was a brilliant film, a great story, 
a little bit predictable. This, I don't think, could have been changed. The story they were trying to tell was that of Thor changing from being this arrogant Jack the Lad to a much more responsible uh, man worthy of being the King of Asgard. That was the story they were telling. Obviously, with that happening, you knew that he was going to end up being a better person at the end of it. You knew he was going to make some sort of sacrifice at some point. These are all guaranteed, but it was really well handled. The amount of character development there was with Loki was fantastic. The movie could have been about him. Just some more shots from his point of view, it could have been a Loki movie. It was absolutely brilliant. I, I couldn't fault the storytelling at all. The first half of the movie did have quite a lot of laugh out loud moments, which I actually really enjoyed. Um, I was starting to think it was going at it a bit too comedically at one point, but then as the pace picked up, the story made became more serious, the jokes did dwindle until at the end there were hardly any jokes at all, it was very very serious. I think it may have been in part because without the jokes the story would have been uh, slowing right right down at the beginning so if someone was going who had no prior interest in Thor the comic book character it would have kept them in the seat. The fight scenes in the movie where magic weapons uh, supernatural abilities were being used were brilliant. I would pay to see in 3D on the cinema screen a compilation of the, the fight scenes. It was definitely well worth doing just for that alone. The hammer was used in so many ways that I hadn't thought of previously. I had given it some thought. It was way more versatile than any other hammer that had any right being. Absolutely fantastic. Again, I don't want to make give any spoilers, but Again, the combat in this movie was brilliant, just like with Iron Man, just like in the Hulk. Marvel definitely have this down. Unfortunately, as much as I love this movie, there were a couple of negatives that I noticed that I'm not entirely sure could have been avoided, but are worth mentioning. When Thor was battling his way through the shield complex, you know, the white tunnels that you see in the trailer, uh, trying to get to the hammer, they got all of the best bits and put them in the trailer. Um, as soon as Thor is fighting without a weapon, the movie slowed right down. Now this is only happening for a couple of minutes, but it makes you. It made me wonder why the man in charge was asking him. This was seen in the trailer as well. Where did you get your training? Chechnya, Afghanistan, Pakistan. For most of that sequence, he was just a muscle-bound man pushing people over. At one point, he jumps up, grabs a bar, and kicks people. Um, at another point, he jumps and kicks with both feet. There wasn't really much skill involved, I could tell. Now, obviously, I'm not sure how much could have changed there. Thought is a brawler. He's not one for martial arts and all that sort of rubbish. It just felt like it slowed down at that point for me. The other thing that disappointed me was how plasticky the armour of Thor's companions looked when they came to Earth. When I was surrounded by CG, by other artificial set that had been made, obviously they had all been fabricated to resemble similar styles or look real in the same sort of way. It looked fantastic when they're fighting ice giants, but as soon as they came to Earth it looked like they were going to a Renaissance fair or a comic exhibition. It did look a bit... Uh, Disneyland again I'm not sure if that could have been helped um, but it was something that did detract slightly at that point as I said I'm not sure if these points could have been avoided due to the way in which they were making the armour to fit with Asgard which it did with the style in which Thor would fight anyway unfortunately they did detract but combined they made up maybe three minutes of the film Overall, it didn't make a difference um, to my enjoyment of the movie. It just kind of irked me for a few seconds at the time. I would definitely recommend this film to a friend, to a stranger, to everyone I meet, and to everyone watching this video now. 
go see it, it's absolutely fantastic and it is a very good example of how 3D is improving. Hopefully that will have given you some sort of idea about whether you want to see the film if you was previously unsure. Again, I'll echo what I said in the review, you must see this film. I will be updating uh, when I see it in 2D, which I will be with a friend, um, to tell you whether or not I thought that the 2D or 3D was better for watching. I have a friend who saw the 3D as well, he wasn't quite so keen on it, so maybe we can give some sort of a comparison. Okay, uh, next I need to retract some information I gave you a few, well, months ago now. Again, sorry for the wait. I gave you some incorrect information about Ryan Reynolds, R.I.P.D. and the Deadpool movie. Now firstly, Deadpool will be like he was in the comic books, not as he was in the Wolverine Origins movie, which frankly was terrible. The writers of this film were the same people who brought us Zombieland. The director is someone who hasn't actually directed a movie before, but he's a visual effects artist. The information will all be in links below because I can't remember their names right now. But the important information, this misinformation that I need to correct from a couple of months back, Rhino and Reynolds is producing. Now I don't know whether he's the only producer or if he's the top producer or if he's a low down producer or what, but he's producing on Deadpool. He is also tied to this film as the lead actor, still. Now the misinformation I gave you before was that Ryan Reynolds had said he could only be in R.I.P.D. or Deadpool. R.I.P.D. being a Dark Horse comic title. He also said in another source I'd found that he will be in R.I.P.D. This obviously meant that he couldn't be in Deadpool. At the moment he is attached to Deadpool as both producer and star. Hopefully I'll be able to give you confirmation as soon as it actually appears. Those of you who are big fans of The Hobbit, or Lord of the Rings, or even just Peter Jackson himself, go to his fan page and like it. Uh, you will be getting in your newsfeed, and if you look backwards on his wall, behind the scenes videos, the making of The Hobbit. Both films, as they're making them. It's going to be quite a long process, filming and making these two films. As you should know by now, I hope so, because otherwise you're a terrible nerd, the films are going to be linking seamlessly into uh, Fellowship of the Ring. So, it's definitely worth looking at. There's going to be a lot of completely new content, so it's not like you can think, oh, I read the book, I don't need to see these making ofs to get some sort of an idea before I watch the films because they are making up a lot of stuff. They're also using a lot of things uh, like notes that um, Tolkien had written, things like uh, Silmarillion that uh, no film has been based off of yet. Uh, there's going to be a lot of new stuff there to people who have only read The Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit, so definitely worth going and looking at the behind the scenes videos that he is uploading to his page. Also, Prometheus, the Alien prequel. It is definitely a prequel, and you will definitely be seeing aliens, the xenomorphs, that we have been used to seeing in the previous films. This one, directed by Ridley Scott. He's back in the saddle, so hopefully it will be a good film. Apparently, the aliens will be recognisable, but they're in a different form to that which they took previously. So I'm very excited to see what form they will be taking. As we all know, uh, they take a rough kind of appropriate form depending on what the host animal was. So whether these are the original aliens, the ones that were created in a lab somewhere, or whether or not these are aliens that have uh, been hosted in a different species, we've no idea yet, but I will keep you updated as soon as I find out that information. Bill and Ted 3 is being made. Keanu Reeves has uh, confirmed this. The other lead actor, I can't remember his name, the one with blonde curly hair, is also going to be involved. And in this movie, it seems to be that it's when the Wild Stallions become these godlike figures uh, in society, because apparently, I keep using the word apparently, according to my sources, I can't confirm any of this because my information should be changing all the time, but I will update it. The Wild Stallions, in this movie, write a song that saves the world. This is, it has to be, what launches them into their uh, deity-like status. Now, obviously, George Carlin isn't going to be able to come back as Rufus. This is very, very unfortunate, because he was fantastic, but hopefully whoever they have in his place will be brilliant.
Now that's pretty much all I've got to say on the movie news this week. Check the link below in the uh, information box to see the new X-Men first class footage. It's definitely worth looking at, there's new powers. You get to see little um, bits of plot that haven't been available in previous trailers. It's definitely worth a look and it uh, bumps up our view count, so brilliant, go favourite it. Now, comic book movie news over, I hand you over to Ryan in his new segment, Game Chats. Also introducing Alex, the new Brit nerd. We are actually trying out something new this time. I'd like to introduce you to you, my friend, Mr. Lexington. Hello. He's uh, decided to join us in this because, uh, well, he's as crazy about games as I am. Indeed. So, so yes, uh, if you'd like to introduce yourself, Alex, uh, and then we can crack on. Yes, um, well, I have also have a YouTube channel, which is um, going to be in the comments. Uh, it's mostly Crisis 2 and uh, Magicka and a bit of Minecraft. Yep. Um, the Magicka is actually this video that's being recorded right now, so enjoy. Onwards we go, so I'm ready and up. Charge! Right, yeah, as you can see, we, we're not at the beginning of the game anymore, we've been playing it a bit, but yeah. It's quite a tradition with me, as if you've seen my Crisis videos, it's not at the start of the game where I actually play it. Yes. <laughs> so. <laughs> but yeah, generally, the idea of this is, we're going to be playing some games, we're going to be talking about some gaming news, uh, and screaming, like little girls. Yeah, that'll mostly be from me. <laughs> Apologies for that. <laughs> okay, so yeah, this is Magicka. Uh, and Vlad. He is not a vampire. No, he is not. <laughs> but yes, um, right. Let's get on to sort of some gaming news whilst people can oogle these lovely graphics. Um, the PlayStation ha Network has been hacked. What are you thinking on this, man? Terrible, absolutely terrible. Um, it's a good thing I haven't got a PlayStation anymore. That's the starters. Yep. It all went on my lovely PC. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> um, but, no, absolutely terrible. I mean, Sony had it coming to them, I've got to say. They really did. They, I mean, they've been quite ridiculous with some of the stuff they've been in news for lately. Yeah. Um, obviously the whole Geohots thing. Yes. Um, that's pissed off quite a lot of people. Which I believe has sort of created this whole PSN hack sort of thing. Anonymous have turned around and said it's not them. So... Which is a surprise considering they took two of their websites down previously. Yes, they're all sitting there saying, well it's not us throwing their hands in the air, so on and so forth. But it is a separate person hacking. Who knows, it may be a, an offshoot of Anonymous. It could just be some random person that was thinking, yeah, this is a good idea. But, in part of the thought of it, it is the whole Geohots case that has caused this in the end. Geohots was only modifying his uh, PlayStation 3, which I think he had every right to. Not too right, you pay enough for it, don't you? Ow. Sorry about that. <laughs> I mean, you pay like, what, it's about 290 quid now, isn't it? Around about that, but like people yeah, who originally joined up, they were paying 500 odd pounds, and for more than just a games console, it was going to be a entertainment system as well. With the old Linux on it. Yep, but then they decided it, to take it out. Yeah, terrible idea, that was going to piss off a lot of people from the off. Yep. So but, that's uh, another thing that is uh, winding up the... Well, basically the people of the PlayStation Network. Wasn't that one of the reasons that Geohots hacked it? Yes, that was. You'd think Sony would learn from this, wouldn't you? Uh, yeah, hopefully they will. But no one really can tell what is happening at the moment. They don't even know if people's credit card details are safe at the moment. Oh, God forbid. <laughs> yes. Which is kind of a scary fault because they have actually attacked the admin department of the PSN. Oh dear. Yeah. I picked a really good time to sell mine then. Luckily enough, I don't buy very much. I uh, on the PSN. Because, you share from everyone else. <laughs> yes. I have these uh, little deals going on here, there, and everywhere. It's, <laughs> it's, it, it works out well. You're like the pimp of PlayStation. Yes, I am. 
<laughs> but um, yes, terrible idea, terrible, terrible, terrible ideas that old Sony having. Even I'm probably gonna get a lot of stigma from this one, but <laughs> like the PlayStation Plus thing was terrible. I don't know. I think some of it is actually really good, like being had able to get. Potential. I think it had potential. It it does still like allowing people to get into betas earlier. But oh, I don't know. It's, it is still money in the end, isn't it? It is still money in the end, but it has allowed people to get into basically creating levels for Infamous 2, which is a massive, massive thing for the community. I, I do really didn't get on with Infamous. I'm, I'm a prototype boy myself. Um, that's the problem with releasing two superheroes type games at the same time. You want, like one or the other, really, don't you? Yeah. Um, but, I, um, I did sit there originally and say Infamous was going to be a pile of crap, blah, blah, blah. But then I sat there and actually played it, and it was really freaking okay, okay. good. Careful with that edge there, man. <laughs> yeah, I noticed you were kind of pushing me into it. <laughs> me? Never. That's what <laughs> I mean. Oh, oh, my God. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Uh, I guess I've really got to sit down and play. I mean, I, I played the demo to be honest. Yeah. And um, I got bored very, very quickly. But um, I hear good things from a lot of people. Um, yeah. I will admit, some people I don't really listen to for their ideas. <laughs> um, but talking of other games um, that I've heard a lot about, Mortal Kombat. Yes. Um, there was a lot of stigma on the whole, um, what was it, the serial code for online play. Uh, yeah, but that's going to happen everywhere because pretty much it's stopping the whole sort of second-hand gaming culture, making people pay for things that they've already paid for. But yeah. if, if you really think about it, they, they have every right to, I say, because buying things second-hand isn't actually putting money in the developers' pockets that they've worked hard on those games for. But damn it, there's a market for it. <laughs> this there is. A very, very Although, big saying one. that, there's no market for StarCraft 2 in the pre-owned department. <laughs> well, yeah. That's because a lot of people love the game. <laughs> yeah. It's a damn shame because I had to pay like 30 odd quid for the bastard thing and I never pay that much money for any game. <laughs> <laughs> But I will admit, it was worth every penny, it really was. I yeah. might have to do some videos on StarCraft as it goes. Really? Oh, I'm not yeah. a big StarCraft player myself. Oh, it, it was an epic story. It's worth it for the story alone. And the fact that there's a big guy in it who goes, Jimmy! <laughs> you know, anyone who does that is good in my books. <laughs> Ooh. Did you see the um the guy who was on, uh, you know, C Nanners? Uh, yeah. Um, he. We, um, did this thing where um, he brought loads of people, uh, he went to people's wells to see what they've created and stuff on Minecraft. Okay. And um, there's this one guy, genius, he had, um, oh, you know the scientist dude out of Half-Life? Uh, the glasses, oh, bald head. Yep. I can't remember his name. I don't think they gave him a name. Uh, he, he did, he did have a name. Was it? Uh, oh, I'm yeah. going to get a lot of bad comments about this now. Um, <laughs> Uh, well, but anyway, yeah, he had his skin for Minecraft, it's amazing. <laughs> but he made, like, literally some of the giant robots from um, StarCraft 2. Oh, excellent. And a frigate from it. Yep. It was absolutely amazing to behold. But um, the actual four um, robot actually yep. fired arrows. That is pretty amazing. Yeah, I suggest anyone who, like, loves watching Minecraft videos to check out CNANA's um, account and have a look at that video because it is quite amazing <laughs> he did have some weird Swedish guys on there recently as well that was hilarious because they all had the same skin and similar names <laughs> normally with the word fjord yeah <laughs> probably yeah <laughs> I think there was a lot of Michaels or Mikhail is it, is it Mikhail? <laughs> I don't know <laughs> but yes yeah, so, um, on other news Project Cafe Yes, Project Cafe. There oh are lots God. of rumours flying around with that at the moment. With its lovely controller technology and yep. its serious gamer demographic. Yes, apparently there are lots of rumours saying that Rockstar have been approached and a lot of like hardcore studios have been approached to develop for it. Ah, interesting. Would Valve be interested in this? This is the question. I don't know. 
Because uh, they seem to have a newfound love for the PlayStation now, with their but, new Steam system. Yes, I believe that's mainly down to the amount of free stuff that PlayStation can send out. Yeah, so it, it gets Valve out there in the end, doesn't it? Yep. Um, and, that, and they're giving away free copies of Portal 2 with every single yep. PlayStation. So. That, that is pretty much their benchmark sort of thing, but like that one of their benchmark games this year uh, we we suck yeah we're dead <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah on to the NGP uh, there's rumors that there's going to be a removable high definition screen there's going to be basically more powerful than the actual PlayStation 3 apparently and also it's going to be shown at E3 this year the NGP is a tasty piece of kit, I must say. The NGP is, yes. Um, I'm, I've got to say, all the games I've seen it so far have been very impressive, including that weird one where you're rolling the ball and um, you use the back of the actual console itself to move the um, world around. Yeah, that is very, very interesting indeed. Oh, why did I just electrocute myself? Twice. I have no idea. <laughs> Oh, my staff, my lovely, lovely staff. Oh, I still got mine. Haha. -ha. Excellent. Um, yes, yeah, so I don't know about you, but I'm actually looking well forward to Dead or Alive on the 3DS. What, I mean, Jigglies in 3D, come on. 3D Jigglies? I, oh, yes. I think there's a lot of people that's uh, looking forward to that. Including our friend James. <laughs> <laughs> Until Kirsty. Well, he should probably not name drop him. <laughs> <laughs> we already have, it's too late. Um, oh, oh, oh. But saying that, um, there is a lot of fighters. It looks like the 3DS is going to be a fighting handheld, which is quite amazing. Yep. I mean, uh, Blaz Blue Team Shift 2 are coming out in May. Um, yep. Dead or Alive as well on the same day, I believe. Yes. Um, they say my pockets are going to be very skint. Oh, Jesus oh, Christ, you're oh, dying again. Yes, I got blown up and I think my staff just fell off. Yeah, probably. It always happens to you, doesn't it? Yep. Probably best I don't heal him as well. Um, <laughs> so, now, um, also, um, good news to look forward to is Ocarina of Time. Looking amazing so far. Yes, indeedy. Hopefully, Skyward Sword can take that nice little route that Ocarina is. Yep, making the uh, love for Legend of Zelda so much more. Oh, oh yes. So much more that I couldn't be bothered to actually dig out my um, Wii. Probably it's dust. <laughs> Let's say it's in. That I've actually emulated <laughs> Wind Waker. <laughs> seen some videos of that on my YouTube channel. Yes. There you go, promoting myself. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, I just walked into your beam. That was probably not the smartest idea. No, never is a smart idea to walk into other people's beams. No, that, uh, there you go. Tips, Minecraft people. Um, anyone have any tips for us on Minecraft and Magicka and all sorts of stuff? I don't even know why I said Minecraft in the first place. <laughs> Give us tips. We're welcome to it. We, we're big men. We can take it. Yes. If we're playing like noobs, let us know. Oh, yes. We love to be told that we're shite. <laughs> well, occasionally. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, don't hurt us too much. We do have feelings where I'm in. Yeah, any any procreative tips out there? That's cool. Yes, don't troll us, otherwise um, Ryan will troll you back. <laughs> <laughs> or try. Yeah, he loves to attempt. <laughs> oh, stop telling me to use Crash the Desktop. I don't want to. <laughs> if I use a really, really high proportion spell like that, I'll kill you. Yes. Lightning and all that sort of jazz. Ooh, actually. That, that, that's not the lightning bolt. Nah! Ooh, oh, ooh. Don't use that spell! <laughs> <laughs> He's trying to kill us. Well, I managed to kill myself. Well done. That means I can't kill you with this then. <laughs> oh, yes. I'm very adept at using that spell. Yes. Uh, I almost forgot what bloody revivals. Oh, hang on, I've got a staff that revives people. What am I doing? <laughs> oh, you fiend. Uh, pick it That's up. a lovely shield you have there, Ryan. It is. It's, it's beautiful. Look at it. It's all shimmery and stuff. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Shame. But yes, also in gaming news, there is another pod 
well, gaming cast out there, which some of you may know for your Minecraft needs. Uh, I bloody hope you do. <laughs> <laughs> it's called Yogcast, also run by a pe by a bunch of British nerds. Probably the best nerds I have ever watched on YouTube, to be honest. It's all right though. We may be able to take their crown. We hope. We hope, but <laughs> but we still love you. Um, we are in fact talking about the Yogs cast. Basically, they sit there, play a video, well, a game of Minecraft, which is actually following a very good narrative at the moment. Um, they also play some other games backwards and forwards, but they are very, very famous for their Minecraft. So famous, in fact, that uh, the superstar DJ, um, Mine, uh, Mount, uh, Dead, Dead mouse. mouse, that's it, Mine, mine Mouse, Dead Mouse. Mine Dead, Mouse, wait, yeah. he does play a lot of Minecraft, he might as well be yeah. called that. Uh, Dead, <laughs> Dead Mouse is actually uh, a Yognaut, he follows them very much. Hopefully we can uh, get some famous people following us, but there's also some good news for the guys. Apparently through his Twitter account, he, he is going to be making a theme tune for the Yogcast, so keep your eye out for that. Decent. It's got to be better than the Nya Nya Cat or whatever the hell it's called. Ah, uh, yeah. That was scary as sin. Absolutely N scary. Yeah, Nya Nya Cat is probably the bane of my existence. I spent 20 mi minutes watching an internal loop of it the other day just to see if I could, was man enough. Oh, well, like the Navi one we did. <laughs> yep. Terrible. Absolutely terrible. <laughs> I was actually tempted to make Nya Nya Cat on my Minecraft server. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Well, that leads on to other things, people. If anyone wants to join our nerd server, yep, I am trying to get it to be changed to the Brit Nerds. I've got to ask for permission for that, though. Um, uh, yes, um, just you know, drop us a link if you want to um, join us. Yeah, you know, we're we're open to people. We have got a whitelist at the moment, but we are willing to drop it if enough people request it. Yes. Um, if you come on the server enough, we will add dot powers to you. Yep. So you can have a nice little bit of creation, you can add to our server, make it look pretty and all that jazz. I mean, someone's got to. At the moment, it's just a mess of weird geeky crap. Yes. Uh, well, there oh. will be a no griefing rule. You get your grief, you will be kicked. Indeed. But yeah, we are trying to reach out to you guys, the community. You can join our Facebook page, which is, um, well, if you just go into your search bar and put in Brit Nerds, we will... Uh, gladly accept you on our forums well on our discussion board should I say I don't think we've got a forum yet have we <laughs> no not yet we've got a discussion board but we'll work on it yep we also sit there and talk about a lot of news that we can't talk about in videos on there as well so if you want to uh, come along join us up go for it we will uh, love to see you there and hear your views also check out the hairy geek Yes. He's like our master, commander, whatever you want to call him. Yep. There is a lot of thanks to go to Tim for like bringing out the Brit nerds in all of us. Um, pretty much. Ah, oh, cheers, Alex. Sorry about that. <laughs> I was trying to kill the little goblin freak next to you. Oh, you, you missed. I know. <laughs> Continue talking. <laughs> uh, yes. Um, yeah, we basically sit there. We... Uh, have a podcast, well, video podcast that we put on YouTube from time to time. You may have seen it, you may have not. But I am moving into the more gaming side of things. So follow Tim's uh, Facebook and you will get every sort of side of Brit Nerds that you can possibly ask for. And his, uh, YouTube is The Hairy Geek, so uh, keep an eye out for him. He's a, links will also be in the comments as well. Yes, any sort of links, we're, what we are talking about, will be in the comments uh, below. You know, the Including little dude both our YouTube channels. Yep, and also Tim's himself, and our Facebook page, and pretty much anything that we do touch the subject on. You want to learn a little bit more, even though we think we may be rambling, which nine times out of ten we are. We are. <laughs> Ooh, I'm a now, on top of that, you know the best thing to do, people? You know the best thing? Subscribe. Yes, definitely. We love subscribe. that, you know, it makes us green. It, it makes what we're doing worthwhile. It's us playing games like noobs for your entertainment. And rambling like idiots. Yes, hopefully, sometimes we can sit there and actually give you some useful information. 
bet you nine times out of ten we're behind Machinima though. <laughs> <laughs> Damn fiends, they're always on top form. <laughs> well, okay, right. We're gonna uh, knock off now, even though we're basically getting our asses handed to us. We're doing better than last time. Yes. But yes, we're going to knock off now, so we will speak to you some point. Hopefully see you on our Facebook page. Hopefully see some new subscribers as well. Uh, don't forget to check out the weekly news updates that we do, which hopefully some of this will be a part of. And uh, yeah, we will catch you later. Ta-ta. Laters. Now, in tech news this week, the DS Lite is dead. Well, not dead, but it is being discontinued in North America. This is because the DSi has replaced it in every detail but for the price. This was going to happen eventually. Um, I suppose it's a sad day for those who... I don't know, it's not really a sad day at all, but it made the news on several sites, so I thought I'd share it with you. Nintendo have announced their new console. It's HD, finally, which means they can have more cross-platform titles like Mortal Kombat or Portal 2, the lack of which has probably hurt the Wii. They're also in the similar kind of vein of getting more titles on the device, showing the system to developers earlier rather than later. With the Wii, they practically surprised developers as well when they announced it, and they didn't get enough time to get decent titles ready, and that definitely hurt the launch of the Wii. It's going to have competitive specs to compete with the PS3 and Xbox 360. Now obviously this is quite a way into the life of those two consoles, but the fact that they're getting in there now does at least mean that they'll be able to start competing. Scientists in America, backed by the US military, are designing and testing a new bionic leg which uses sensory input from the user's muscles in their thigh. This is for people who have lost the lower part of their leg. The leg, bionic leg has a knee joint and an ankle joint that both move based on sensory input from the user's thigh. First off, they set up the sensors on the leg. Then the user tries to move the joints on a computer avatar. They train the computer avatar to recognize what signals are for what activity. They spend a couple of months doing this. They train the computer to recognize their personal signals. This is probably something that would end up being, in the future, being able to be done at home with the user's own computer. The sensors are then removed from the user's leg and placed on the shell of the uh, prosthetic in the exact same place as they were on the user's leg. And then they find they've got a bionic leg which they can effectively control the knee and ankle joint with their mind. Now, current prosthetic legs are better than peg legs but you still need to swing them for the knee to work. The ankle joint they don't have any control over. With this leg they'll be able to walk upstairs much more naturally. They'll be less likely to fall over. It'll be much much more natural. This is fantastic. It is the way forwards. We are living in the future. I thought Skype and video chat was the stuff of science fiction but this stuff for actually replacing someone's limb is brilliant. They get my awesome nerd people of the week badge to be designed later on maybe. And now we move on to the OMG WTF section of the show. China has banned all fiction containing time travel. They've gone crazy with the ban stick. Now, this means that any films, movies, books, games, all fiction containing time travel is banned. So I suppose they're allowing for the fact that maybe time travel might be invented in the future, so real time travel can be talked about. But at the moment, we're screwed. So this means they can't watch Doctor Who, or that last Star Trek movie, or any number of things. Now, I found a list online, and they've got a big old list of a lot of films that would be affected by this. I'm going to read a couple of examples. Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. Two high school teenagers flunk history and have to retake it in the summer. This is what that film would be if it had to be remade. Another one, Back to the Future. A movie about a misfit teenager meeting an eccentric doctor driving a car above set speed limits. Not all that interesting. The Terminator. A regular assassin tries to kill Sarah Connor for no reason whatsoever. Okay, that could possibly have some kind of a awesome... No, it doesn't work. China, OMG, WTF. Now, that concludes this week's episode of Brit Nerds. You can follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and on YouTube by subscribing to Facebook slash Brit Nerds, Twitter slash Brit Nerds, and YouTube slash The Hairy Geek. 
We're building this up as a network, so there are also two other channels, those of Ryan and Alex, that you can subscribe to. The links are below. And make sure you do follow our Facebook and Twitter in order to keep up to date with news as it happens. We're also definitely going to be having a Steam group. This means that anyone who uses Steam to play maybe Left 4 Dead or Killing Floor or Magicka or uh, Portal 2 co-op maybe or any game that is on the Steam network. If you join the group it means that you've got other fellow Brit nerds who you can play games with and chat with and all that sort of thing. It also means if you happen to get into the group and say uh, me and Ryan are playing Left 4 Dead 2 well we need two other people so if Alex isn't online then you could end up being one of the other two people that gets into the game which means that you can show off your mad gaming skills and be on the show now you might not necessarily be on the show but if you're not then you'll be on Ryan's channel if you are featured in our show in any way whatsoever if it's a shout out which we want lots of we want to be shouting out we want to be reading out your messages or if you manage to get into a gaming session which is recorded and put into this show or recorded and put onto Ryan's channel then you will get a shout out and you will be able to pimp whichever web page you want to in the comment section that's been it for Brit Nerds this week I'm Tim and I hope to see you again